This conference will now be recorded. All right. Good morning, guys. Let me make sure this thing's recording. All right. All entire audience recording. All right. Looks like we're set up. How many do we have in here? Just a few. All right. So, um, and by the way, I'm going to mute all you guys just so you can't, uh, so nobody talks all at once. So any questions, just go ahead and write them in the S SPX live um, on Slack, right? Anything you have to say or questions right there. I have that open on my second screen. So I'll be able to read those like as you guys type them or you can actually type them in the webinar chat right here. I don't know if you guys see that. I know I see it, but anyways, let's just get started on the, making some levels on SPX. So if you have a chart up, go ahead and pull up the SPX, the 15 minute candlestick and get rid of all the indicators. Literally just get rid of all of them. No moving averages, no nothing. Well, there's no volume on uh, SPX anyway, so you don't have to worry about that. And this is, uh, this is Thursday's close right here. I'm gonna zoom in and then I'll start zooming out as we have to expand to get more levels. So just for starters, how, how I would draw this, say we're coming into we're coming into Monday and I have no levels here. I would use like this, uh, the close that we had on Thursday um, to create a little pivot channel, like a trigger channel going into Monday. To do that, I'm gonna use this area right here. As you can see, there's congestion. This is near the close, obviously they're all 15 minute candles. If you can see this close right here, near this close, and you look back to two days, prior look at all the congestion in the exact same area i'm sure you can see my cursor going across the screen i'm pointing but you guys can't see me so it's kind of pointless but this congestion here that obviously is mad resistance into this close so that's where i'm going to put my first line where these candles are closing and wicking and where all of these candles are closing that's going to be the top side of my pivot channel that's where i'm basing this off of right here so i'm going to go ahead and use just a white line just because that's i'm going to have to change all these colors like come monday because i'm just going to use all the same color because we're going to be doing quite a bit of levels here so right here it's about the 2908 level ish right there is where i'm going to put that top side uh, pivot trigger so coming into monday that's going to be a trigger for upside if we're breaking that and then for my the next thing i would do is put in a little the downside trigger which would be, if you're looking at these candles right here, this is midday, Thursday. Look at this congestion. We tried to break it here. We wicked down, we broke it. We wicked down again. We tried to break it. We even tried to wick down on the close and we still held that level. That right there is gonna be nice support and there's congestion here. If you look on the day before, hopefully you can see my cursor. Yeah, you can. There's congestion here and there's a lot of support right there. So this level right here, this 2904-ish, 05-ish, and again, they don't have to be like to the penny. We're trading 15 minute candles. So uh, it doesn't need to be, oh, exactly 2406. It doesn't need to be exactly to the penny. We're just getting a feel for the level. So right here is where I'd put my bottom, my bottom side pivot, right there. And, and as you can see, like this level, it's not just from right here and right here. There's a lot of wicks into it. There's a lot of congestion at that level. All through here, we were playing against it. So that's my, that would be my trigger channel going into Monday is a uh, 29.08 on the top side, 29.04 on the bottom side. That's obviously like above, um, scalp calls below, scalp puts. Um, which side, uh, go ahead and type to me, which side do you want me to go towards first? Do you want me to go um, upside levels or downside levels? Go ahead and type in SPX life. Somebody. Down. All right. That's what I was deciding on anyways. Let me stretch this out a bit. Oh, Justin, you're in here? What the heck? <laughs> All right. So, and when I'm creating these levels, my <laughs> fans I brought, but the very first thing I look at is the day prior. If we've been in this range, the day prior, those levels are what I'm using the like first and foremost. Like obviously to upside, um, I'd have to use days previous, but for the downside, I'm looking at this is yesterday's action. The very first level I'd be looking at, and I'm sure you guys know we traded these levels on Thursday, but the very first level, when you look past, um, you look to the left to plan to the right. Right here, obviously, big time level. What is that? 2,900. The reason I'm taking that is this, this candle right here, this candle bunch. 
Look at the how it defended here. It flagged here. It retested here. And then I'll, even later in the next day, right here, that same exact level. Whenever you see candles coming back to the same level, upside and downside, like red and green candles closing, if there's that much congestion, that's going to be an important level and something that's, that we're going to use as a trigger. So the next level to the downside right here is going to be 2,900. It doesn't have to be exact. You could use the bottom of these two candles, which is 2,978. Or you could use the tops of these, 2,900, 21-ish. But any, like anywhere in between these, where all these wicks are, I keep trying to point to my screen. Forget I don't have my webcam on. So I'm going to draw this, this first downside level that we watch right in here. And first off, do you guys understand where I'm getting these like based on the candles? Am I confusing anyone? Right there. That's actually a good spot. That's bottom of these wicks from uh, Wednesday, and it's the tops of these wicks from Thursday. That's going to be our first downside level. You're looking for areas where we wicked and retested more than once, something that gave us trouble when we're trying to get through that level. Let me zoom out a little bit here. And see if we're looking for another downside here. What level is this? 28.99. That it only happened once. There's only one candle there. But don't really need to put a level there. It wasn't really, really tested in any other time. It kind of went through it. So I zoom out and I'm looking further back, looking for like bigger levels where it retests more than once. Right at this level right here, it's uh, this is on April 15th, the 98 level. You can see we wicked here and defended. Then we came over on Wednesday, the 17th, we wicked, defended, and then on the, this side, at top side, it wicked up against. That's going to be an important level regardless of which way we're going. And, oh, actually, even we wicked down here. So if you see how many times this level was defended, upside and downside, that's where I'm going to draw a line. You're looking for, for levels to be tested multiple times over multiple days. That's where we're trying to draw these lines on the 15-minute chart. So let me throw in one right there, right around there at the 98 level. Obviously, next since um, I'm sure you guys get the feel of what I'm looking for to draw these. So uh, if you guys have charts open and you're drawing these with me, um, why doesn't somebody go ahead and try and type what my next downside level would be based on this chart right here? Again, we're simply looking for for the red and green candles reacting at the level multiple times. If you like, right where my line is right here, this 96.50 ish. Well, yeah, the tray, yes, for that, and a 92 down. Actually, I would go higher than that. I would go higher this on this this bottoming of the day on what is this Thursday? Yeah, the bottom of the day right here. That's always going to be a big level because. We're going to want to test that, and that's it. That's it, 2893.79. We're going to want to test that level if we're going from downside. I know the wick is down at 92. So, yes, 92 will be a big level because that's the lower day, and obviously that's going to be a big, big level. So I'll draw that one in. But if we're, if we're scalping, we can draw levels in between that because that's a six-point range. Yeah, obviously, yes. Yes, this level, yeah, this level right here, Trey, yeah. Right, yeah, right here. There's resistance there for four days and support there. But in between the this 98 and 92 level, right about here, this it's a 95-ish. If you see, we have these candles right here that couldn't break through it. We have these ones that tried on Thursday. They also tried after. I mean, they broke it. But when it broke back through, it retested that level. That level was tested four times. That's going to be a big like inflection point, and that's it. 28.95.55 doesn't have to be perfect. You can use 28.96 again. We're not we're not here to pinch pennies. We're trading stock options. We're not at Ralph's. That right there is going to be the downside levels coming into Monday based on the basically the weekly range that we had last week on the four day week. Those are the downside levels that are that we're going to have to look to defend and that were tested multiple times last week. Now we got to zoom out to go lower. Where are we at? 92. Obviously, like Trey said, that 92 level, that is big time resistance from the 11th. It had real trouble there. That's why we tested that here, and it supported. 
low a day on Thursday held strongly at that what was resistance and now it's support. And now we're going to look downside more. And since obviously we don't have any um, candles here because we were above that level on Thursday, we look even further back. Now we're looking at April 5th through about the 12th. And we're looking for congestion with red and green candles. So when we're looking back here to the left, what, what day is this? This is April 11th. April 11th that we created that big resistance at 92. Look at this area of what, an hour and a half, maybe more. Right here, look at all these wicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All in, all in the same exact area. And not only that, if we look back to April the 8th, we see a flag at that same exact area with one, two, three, four, five candles. Right there. And if we look back to, hold on, my whiskey's in the way. April the 5th, that same area, I won't move my cursor, but that same area, look at this congestion in that same exact area, that same level. The level I'm looking at is the 2890 level, 2890. That's gonna be major, major support if we do end up breaking that 92 level. So the 90 is, in, it's 89, 90 again. You don't have to be exact, but this level right here, as you can see to the left, let me zoom in just a little bit. Pull it over to these days. This is April the 4th through the 11th. Look at all the, the congestion at that level, at that 2890 level. Right there. If that loses, if we lose that, we're going to look obviously at the gap. The gap fill will be down to 88. That's a given. I don't know. I don't really have to advise you on why we need to put a level there, but that's a gap fill. Obviously, that's an important level. And to do the gap fill perfectly, if you hover over the candle, it'll tell you the candle close. And that is at uh, 288830, it looks like. So that's where we're gonna place that level. That is the gap fill. That is that important uh, pivot there. Now coming down, and again, we're still in the August 5th through the 11th area. We're looking, Again, the, the way we want to watch these levels is since it's all, these are all 15 minute candles, we want to look where there's the most action at that level. That, that means there's the most volume. Everybody talks about the supply and demand and volume pockets. Whenever there's candles that stay stagnant in a region, that's just that's volume. And when we get to that level, we need to eat up all of that leftover volume because there was a lot of buys and a lot of sells there. So the next level down from the gap fill 88, if we look, it's going to be about this 85, 86 level because on April 11th, we went, we traded around that for probably three hours. April the 10th, we traded around it for about three hours. Look at all these wicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There's literally probably 30, 15 minute candles that went through and we're trying to defend this 85 level. That's going to be our next downside level. Let's throw one in right there. Again, where do you put these? I like to put them at the candle bodies. I don't really like to put them on the wicks unless it's the very bottom. But if you're looking here, let me zoom in and show you how these work out. Look at these candles. Look at how many candle bodies closed at this exact level. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. And then not only that, look at when we wick down, look at how perfect that wick was. This level was in from, from here. And then so when we were trading this day on the 10th, Look at that. Look at this green hammer candle. Look at that wick. It came right down to this level. When there's that much action at a price point, price tends to return to that level. It needs to retest it. It needs to defend. It needs to chew up the volume. That's what it's doing there. And that's why that long wick and wicks typically tend to touch. Like if we look back here, what day is this? April the 8th at the 2892 level. Look at these wicks that there's a candle body closes. There's a candle body closes. Look at these wicks. They were telling these wicks wicked up here even before the candle bodies closed up here on the 11th. You're looking for action to return or whether with, I call it congestion. It's just whenever there's a lot of action at a certain price point over multiple days, that's where you're going to want your levels to be. Because there's a reason the price keeps returning. And if it breaks that level, it means something. That's how, that's basically how we're using these levels to trade. We're finding, we're finding areas where the price tends to return and it's having trouble moving up or down. So when it breaks, 
that certain level that it keeps returning to, that's when we're going to take our trade, whether it's short or long. And then I'll get into how we try like trade using them, like when I go long, when I go short, because it re there really is no secret formula. It's not because people always ask me, they're like, hey, like it broke that level. Why didn't you trade it? <laughs> and it's, it's kind of hard to answer because I don't take every, every time it breaks a level. It's not just boom, make a trade. You have to uh, you have to watch and see like how it's reacting at the level. It's not, oh, it broke immediately. And then sometimes I do like in the morning, people were asking me that. I think it was Wednesday. I took a trade on the opening candle. The reason I did that was because of the momentum from earnings and the hard rejection of a massive, massive resistance level. It turned into an inverted hammer. And I took that on, a, I think it was a 29.15 break, if you guys remember. I don't, but we traded it and we traded it for like 11 points down and I think like four minutes. So there's no, there's no secret formula. It's, it's screen time. It's watching it. It's watching how it reacts at the level and also having a game plan because if it breaks and then you get, say we're breaking downside and it, it breaks, you get short, your stop needs to be tight. Yeah, your stop needs to be tight because like there's no, there's no secret formula. Every time it breaks, it's not going to turn into a great trade. But say, let's say here, where, what is this? The 2888 level. You guys see my cursor? Let's say the, um, on Monday we break this. I mean, obviously that's 17 points away. But say we break this level and you get short. And you get short and it's coming down and it's your way and it doesn't hit the next target, which is 85. It doesn't hit it. Okay, that's, that's what trading is. If it reverses and comes back, your stops, I use my stops at the next trigger level because now that the, this, this level right here becomes an upside trigger. So if we get short at 88 and it comes down to 80, or not 80, not 80 but like 87, 86, comes down here and we don't exit, it reverses, it breaks back through our entry point, we have to have a tight stop at this next level because that is now the trigger for upside. And there's been times where I've made the same exact trade three times in 10 minutes and stopped out. That, that, that happens, but you have to keep your stops. If it breaks your level, you get in and you just have to have a game plan. You know what your target is, you know what your stop is. And that, it's, it's, that, it's really that simple. You, you get in on your break, you get out at your target, or you get out at your stop. That's it. It's that simple. All right, but now, all right, I kind of went on a rant. <laughs> let, me, let me get back to, let's add some more levels. We're doing downside levels right now. The last level is 28.85. So under that, what are we looking at? Right, right around here, if you can see my cursor, this is from the April 10th. April 10th, you can see these candles defended, wicked three times, four times, five times, and then even on the 11th, we wicked and defended that same exact level. I mean, this level's pretty tight, but that's around the 28.83. Again, we're looking for congestion. We're looking for candle closes and wicks into levels. So right here would be our next one. That's around 28.83. I don't know if any of you guys are, oh, hold on, let me read that. What did you say, Trey? I was just about to ask. Let me step in the Yeah, well, Trey, yeah, it's, um, whenever, whenever I'm considering and it's breaking my levels, I tend to wait at least a minute or two just to see if it stays. Cause we see how often, like since these are the levels, look at the wicks. Like if we were trying to get long here, um, let me zoom in just for an example. This is a question that Trey asked me, by the way, guys. He asked, uh, when are you, when you start considering a possible trade as it goes through levels, like say we went, um, this is April 11th at 7.30 AM. This green candle right here, obviously that wick, that means the candle was above it. If we went long here, and just wait if you went along immediately and then obviously if that happened if we did go along we have to stick to our stops and we stop here we would have stopped at the 90 three points lower but i don't typically right when it breaks i don't typically buy it literally it, t it typically takes me i need to watch it at that level for two to three minutes to see how it's reacting to see if it's going to reject it immediately to see if there's volume coming in to keep it at that price level i'm not i'm not buying immediately on the breaks I'm looking for some a reason to like to give me a reason like a flag above the level. You guys know I love flags, whether it's bear or bull. If we're flagging at a resistance or a support, that just eats through the supply or the demand, and then gives us more velocity when we do break. Because since we ate through it all, there's not as much resistance, not as much the what is I don't know how you say this. 
there's a yeah like the like water takes a path of least resistance once we eat through all the resistance say the water was pounding a rock and then the rock starts slowly disintegrating once it's disintegrated what's well, going to stop that water from literally just uh, rushing in now that's basically what i'm doing with the levels i'm watching the levels like it's rock and i'm waiting for them to like weaken and weaken and weaken till we can get a pop up through or down through regardless of uh, whether we're going short or long hope that makes sense <clears throat> i'm not the best with analogy so i apologize anyways more downside where, where are we we're at the 80 level we're already about 25 points from our close so where are we going now 80, we're at the 83 level i could draw a bunch in here but i don't like really doing levels within with one point gaps on spx since it moves three points in like 10 seconds so the next bigger level under 83 is going to be the 79 level. I know you guys remember it. Look at right here on April 9th. April 9th. Look at look at those four candle bodies, all exactly the same, all wicks of different lengths. The, or it's at 80. Yeah, 79, 80. Like, obviously, big time, big time support. And then the one time it did break through on the, on the 9th, it broke through. We gapped right above it, retested it, and defended it. All these retests are making it a perfect spot for another level, 28, 79, 80-ish. Uh, but the, the 79 and 80 level, big, big support, big time level, that if we get into this area um, that that's and we break below it, then it's pretty likely we're going to be coming down to, well, obviously, this tiny little gap filled that I guess we still haven't even filled. Oh, huh, that's something to take note. Can you guys see that? Under 79 and 80, this little tiny gap right there, that's to 78.53. It's only a buck lower, but it is a gap fill, so I will put a level there. That's at 78.50, or the exact level since we're, it is a gap fill. Let me pull it up. Yeah, 28.78.51 is the exact gap fill that level and you guys can write these levels down as i'm calling them out if you want to keep them in your in like a little notebook um i do that some mornings actually Wait, I, I don't have my webcam on. i keep trying to show you guys shit my bad um so like oh, once we have the pivots i'll literally have my notebook and on the left side i'll write the upside just pivot the 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 levels just the price levels and then on my right side of the notebook i'll have the downside levels and i'll just put the last numbers you know me just like 88 82 just targets and levels so that way, even if I'm on my phone or anything, all I do is look at the price and know, and I'll know if it's breaking um, upside or downside levels. It's just something I do most mornings. I just write them down. Just them, and I, I know they're on my chart, and I'm looking at the chart all day. But it's just, just another way to look down and just know exact price. So that way, the candles don't like trick you. If you want to scratch, hold on, my dog's barking. <laughs> Grab it. Go. Sorry about that, guys. <clears throat> But yeah, it's good to just write down the levels exactly. That way, like, if you're looking at a chart all day long, you kind of start second guessing yourself. It starts wicking. So just write down the exact levels or the just the last digits. You don't need to be to the penny. Just like these levels right here, I'd write down the 83 level, the 78 level. Just like that, just so you know, just in the back of your mind, you know the levels you're looking for, regardless of what this chart action is trying to like fool you. All right, on to the next. Oh, the upside levels are going to be tough to make. I have to go back so far. Anyways, the next downside level we're looking at, we're getting into April like third now. Next downside under 78 is going to be right around this. You can see this bull flag from, what is this, April 4th? April 4th, you see the bull flag where that supported? Look over to April uh, 9th and 10th. Literally, my, the cursor going across the screen. Look at it exact same level look at the candles look at them this is why i trade the 15 minute i mean i watched spx for over a year on different time frames and i noticed this happening way 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 more often than any other time frame on spx look at these candles they close it exactly this is this is several days apart several days apart look at these candles april 4th april 9th look at them literally the exact same level that's why we're trading the 15. That's why the 15 minute levels work so well on SPX. 
because they res SPX respects the 15 days and days and months later. This is going to be so this level right here is going to be important in our next downside, which is around 2876. So I will throw one in right there. Bam. Continue to zoom out. Right here, I'm sure everybody can see where this next level would go. Let me zoom in so the channels aren't as small, but I kind of want to see. There we go. All right. So when we're looking for this next downside level, you would might you would say like right here, but that's only that's 80 cents lower from that level. We're not gonna really use that. That's an 80 cent move. That's an eight penny. That's an eight penny move in spy. That's really not something we're trying to trade. So the next level we look at is this massive wick here. If you look, look really this closed on this is April the third. April the 3rd at 7 a.m., the 7 a.m. candle. There's that wick, there's that body close. Oh, let's look over here to April the 9th, the far right of your screen. The far right of your screen, look at that wick from, this is six days later, this wick right here. Oh, is it? did it come down and touch exactly where this candle body closed? Oh, it did. That's gonna be another level. We're looking for price to return to these levels. And then on the 15 minute, I shit you not, guys, it SPX, I've never seen, and people have asked me if they can use this on different stocks. And the honest answer, I don't know. I, did, I haven't watched another stock for three years straight, staring at the same time frame. I'm, I'm sure there are stocks that react, but maybe they, maybe they respect the 10 minute. I don't know. But my strategy only applies to SPX, as far as I know. Because that's all I've studied it on that's all i've done my research and back testing on is just spx so i don't want to give people like false hope like oh yeah go ahead and play this on boeing no problem play it on netflix yeah it'll work because no i that i don't know i'm sure there is something that works on it but i don't know what that is <sighs> sorry needed some coffee all right i'm just gonna do a couple more downside levels and then we'll go upside because we already are i mean we're gonna have a good basis point for monday for everyone, because we already are uh, we're like, what, 35, almost 30. Well, I'll go about, yeah, 30 points out from the close. So next level, we're going to, this is, this is where it gets hard when there's the, when things are breaking through like this, you see there's just massive candles. There's not really any congestion. They were, this is just basically a V bottom move. <sighs> Pardon me. <clears throat> so we're going to look for literally any kind of any type of congestion and the only thing we can see on this chart right here is at it's april the third and we have this red candle body and wick down this green then the red came back down and you see two candles over it wicked into it twice twice so that's four times five times it tried and couldn't really decide what it's doing at this level and since there's not really congestion anywhere else, that's where I'm going to put a level because if we do come down and it's falling like this, this this level right here is the best shot at it at it um have, like having some trouble at. And also, look, April third, look this little tiny congestion. There's not much congestion, but this little tiny. Look to April third to the left. Oh, what is that? A wick that came exactly to these candle closes. Look at these candle closes, these wicks. Look at this wick down to the bottom. That's going to be our next level. That's at 2871.63 ish. You can draw it to the bottom of that wick and that, that'll take it straight across. <clears throat> All right, that's it. the 71 level. I'll just, I'll just close this day out. See, <laughs> look, look at all these levels. I have them, they're all ready all the way up. So if we get a dump, guys, we're set with levels. These go all the way, I have them all the way down to 2400. <clears throat> the next level down, obviously, the only place there's congestion, right about there. That's at the 69 level. I'm going to go ahead and just fill these ones in pretty quick since I know I'm almost positive you guys get the gist of it. If you guys don't, go ahead and just type in the SPX life. Go ahead and type that in if you have any questions about where they're coming from, I, about how I'm using the 15, how we're getting all of these. Uh, cause I'm only gonna fill in a couple more downside and then we'll start on the upside. So the next level here, obviously we have this, these three wicks, these two candle bodies. We look to the past, boom, we had a bull flag. 
there at the same level, two wicks. That's a big level right here. So you'd see to the right, there's three wicks through it, two candle bodies, two more candle bodies to the left, a bull flag here, and two wicks on April the 2nd. So that's where we're gonna draw this line. Again, I base every single line off of these candles. The 15 minute candles, nothing more. Nothing more. I'm just gonna fill these in real quick so we can go upside just so I have them. And as I draw them, I'm sure you'll be able to see where I'm getting them from or what I'm looking at to derive them. And yes, this is literally how fast I draw them when I'm drawing them because I've been staring at the screen for so long, it doesn't take me long to look for what I'm looking for. I just, it just see, I just see it and it pops out to me. All right, let's, so let's just go over the downside areas. Is this the close? Hold on. Okay. The areas that we drew in so far, if you guys wanna write them down, we started with the pivot channel for um, the close on Thursday. So our top side of the pivot is 29.08. The bottom side of the pivot is 2904. And then our targets, and they basically are targets if we're going short, if we're falling. The targets are as follows 2900, 2898, 2895, 2892 50 ish, 2890, 2888, 2884, 2882, 2879, 2878. The only reason it's so close is because that was a gap fill. 2876, 74, 71, 69, 66, 65, 63. And that's all we did for the downside. Now here comes the fun part because I have to zoom out way, way back to get upside levels like to October. So bear with me because I have to literally, and this is literally what I do. So you guys will see how small the chart gets and how, how long it takes to get zoomed in. But to start the first upside levels, let me switch to green actually. <clears throat> to get the first upside levels, obviously we have the 29.08 uh, topside pivot for long if we open in this channel on uh, Monday. We're looking obviously to the left, pretty clear right around here at this basically, which was a bear flag on uh, April 16th. Pretty clear these levels right here at 2910 are gonna be there and we wicked into them on the uh, 11th. Or is it the 12th? Yeah, and the 12th. Right around there, 2910. You can see all of the action there. Uh, and this is where it's going to get fun because we only have four candles to play off. So this upside, we're going to put them right here. The one little tiny congestion. Next upside there. And then our third upside before I have to zoom out is going to be this the high day from the 17th, which was 29.18-ish. Did we round print? We, we did round print. I think I mentioned that. We round printed. All right, somebody's typing. What's up? Before I zoom out, because this is going to take a bit. What time is it? Hold on. Woo! I'm long-winded. Sorry, guys. Oh, uh, yeah. Trey, I'm actually, I'm literally about to, that's the next thing I'm doing. I just did the 29.18. So now I'm going to zoom out, and it's going to take a while, so bear with me. I'm zooming out right now. The, the chart's going to get real small. I'll zoom back in once we get to the, so basically, since obviously this is our most recent high, the way we draw the levels to the upside, we need to zoom out and go back to the last time SPX was in this price range. Price range. And to do that, we literally have to zoom out until we see candles up in this area. And this is a while ago, we're already getting to December. And I'm already zoomed out as far as I can go, so now I'm gonna have to drag my screen. Drag it over there. See now, look. See this, this, these candles right here. This is back in September and October. So now I'm gonna try and zoom these in for you, so the candles don't look like just sticks. And now this is what I'm gonna draw my levels for next week if we're going upside from these candles from October. From October. So yes, Trey, the gap you were talking about, here is this the first gap. This gap is at 29, 19, 35. 
that is going to be that's the bottom of the gap that's going to be our first um, upside resistance next obviously this gap fill at 29.2371 so trey yes you're exactly right that's the that's going to be the next level right there that gap fill and again this these candles are from october this is october guys so i'm zooming in just so you can get a better view and the way the way we're treating this is exactly how we treated just pretend this was thursday's action that's how we're drawing the levels it's the exact same thing yes it's months and months ago it's a 15 minute chart they work they work our next upside resistance after 24 if we're looking look at this wick on that gap day this top wick is about at 27.50 let's go back over here here's one here's another support off of 27.60 almost exactly the same and then we look at October 1st, October 1st, a lot of action in this 2760 area. The candle closes here, retest, candle closes here. That's gonna be our next upside, right there. And if anybody um, can actually see price points, um, any idea where the next upside would be? I mean, it really should be pretty obvious just looking at these 15 minute candles this this day august 2nd right here that i'm circling i don't know if it's glitchy but <laughs> yeah it's it's a, it's pretty much a given yes Trey, exactly that's where i'm drawing that next one right there like it's a, a we're looking for this kind of congestion and candles to look, look at these candles they're opening and closing at the exact same price i'm telling you this happens on the 15 minute with spx way like once it started after like six months of me watching it and it literally was like somebody hit me in the head with a hammer, like, oh, like <laughs> the 15 minute, it actually works. This next level right here is gonna be where there's congestion, obviously. We look to the left, this is October 1st. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine candles around that 29, 33 level. We come back here to October 3rd. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven candles in that same exact price range. What are we gonna do? We're gonna draw another upside level right there and and what i basically do is split the difference obviously these are lower that's at 3280 this is at 3330 and then the tops of these are at 3390 so if we just get a happy medium there because there's obviously a lot of support and balance right there we'll do 29 3350. that's gonna be important level look at all the is this all-time high actually i think it is october 3rd i believe october 3rd is when we made all-time highs So there's only about two, three more levels to go on the upside. We're gonna go, you could put one here. That's a $2 range, obviously from right here. Tough spot. 29.35, this is October 1st. Look at the congestion. We're gonna go to the top side of that congestion. It had trouble then. Um, you can bet your ass if we, get, if we get to this level, even next week, it's gonna have trouble at that same spot. Look at all these candles through it. One, this is in, a matter of three days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 27, 15 minute candles pass through this price. 27 of them. Next up. Oh, we're almost done here. All right. Obviously, this 37 level. I'm sure you guys can see that. That's the top side of all this, this range and this top wick that we tested and failed. The last two levels, obviously, top of the candle, 38, and then the all-time high wick. Right there, and then all-time high wick. Boom. Let me, let me get back to the, where we are. Zoom in and zoom back out show you every level that we made today so yeah it looks like a lot well we did all of these today and even when you zoom out they all play on purpose going into monday is what i'll leave you guys with unless anybody have any more questions now that we got all of the levels drawn we're set up for monday we have a 30 point range on either side of our pin so we're pretty set up for Monday. Any questions at all? All 
I don't think so, Scrap. I think we're done. All right. Well, again, and this was recorded for anybody that came in late or anybody that uh, missed it. But this is so right here. This is what we're looking at coming into Monday. Looks pretty. There's a lot of there's a lot of targets upside and downside. I think we do get some movement, so we're looking good. But remember our pivot for Monday: 2908, 2904. It would be amazing if we open in that. But you know the pajama traders they like to gap us and fuck the option traders. So there's that. But if we open in between this 04 and 08 level, that's that's gold for us. It won't it won't jack premiums. What we say? Okay. Okay, deep water. Uh, yeah. When I like entering a trade, here. Let me. I'll, I'll actually type on the screen. Say we opened. Let me put a. Say we opened on. On Monday, right here. Can you see that ellipse? Say we opened right here. All right. Say we open right here and we're falling down. This 28904, you see where, obviously you know where I got the levels from You were, if you were here in the morning or early. Right here, say we break and there's a candle. Let me, can I make a rectangle? Yeah. Say, say the candle's like that and we're breaking. Right here, I would wait. I wouldn't buy right on the break. Typically, what I would do is obviously I want to see how it reacts after it's under the level, see if it fights back like these wicks. But under this wick right here, if we break that on the candle, that would be my like the obviously the level is my trigger, but this gives me more confidence to enter if we break this low, this wick. So if we break that 2902, I would enter. Let me type. I would enter. Get out of here. I would go short on that break. Like obviously this is the trigger, but to get confidence under this, under this uh, wick is where I would get short. The stop would be, uh, my stop would be actually, normally it would be that target, but that's a pretty big range. My stop would be the open of this candle or the high of day on this opening candle. That would be my stop. And then my targets would be as follows. This is this and this is how I trade because I scale out obviously, as most of you know. I'll, I'll get to you right now, asset, one second. So here, here, Deepwater, if you can see this, this is literally how I would set up my trade. If come Monday, say we open around 29, 29 or 6, this is wishful thinking because you know they're going to gap us, but wishful thinking. If we open here and we start falling, again, 29.04 is my short trigger. This bottom wick, though, would be my confirmation because Look, it defended it there, it defended it there. If we break there, I would enter short. That's around 29.03. 29.03. My stop would be, and this the stop is it's a like it's a it's a hard stop. You can't when you're playing SPX, it moves fast. You can't just piddle around and be like, oh, maybe, maybe it's gonna reverse. No, you stop, and then if it comes back to your level again, you can re-enter. There's no hope in SPX. You get in, you get out, period. You get in, you either lock profit or you stop. That's what you do. And you lock it, you do both quickly. Um, but when I exit, I scale. So if I got short here and we can continue following like we did here, like look at this break. And this break on April 18th at 6.30 in the morning. And didn't I trade? I think I did make a trade. I don't know. But look, we broke that line. It broke this wick. This wick at 29.03. I would enter short there. And then look, look at the targets. It would have hit one, two, all three of my targets. And I scale out. And if you're only buying one or two contracts, then obviously the, you can't scale out multiple times. But you do need to lock immediately. Protect your profits. Like if you bought two, you need to sell one at target one or two to protect yourself. 
So that is how I would, that's how I manage a trade and how I make them off of my levels. The levels are my triggers, my stops, and my targets. That's what the levels are to me. There are, the, every single level is a pivot, a trigger, a stop, and a target. It just depends on which direction it's going into that level. If that makes sense. Does that make sense, Steve, before I move on to the next question? Uh, all right, cool. I'm glad I cleared that up. All right. Question on sizing on a Monday. You take more than later in the week to protect your gains. So Monday, you take 10. Friday, you would downsize. I ask because sometimes size is not presented when trade is taken to express confidence. No, yeah, no, I got you. I got you. I said, and the reason, like, um, the when it comes to sizing, the reason um, I don't, sometimes I do post the sizing. The reason I don't is I'm trying my best to get it like real time. And you guys see how often I get in a trade and I'll, I'll put my trigger. I'll tell you guys what I'm looking at and what strike. But right when I get the fill, I go to type. And as I'm typing, I have to put, I have to type at channel, um, fill this option at this price on this strike. I have to type all that. And by the time I get to press enter, the price is already like, it's like 50 cents different. It's, and I'm already getting ready to get out. So the way, the way since, since I'm trying to get it to you as fast as possible, I don't always put the size. If, if it's staying stagnant and as I'm typing, the price is still at the same price that I got in at, then I will give you the you guys the size, like the amount of contracts I bought. But when I see it moving after I got in and I want you guys to try and get in at the price nearest me, I try to just get the, get the buy out there just for you guys to see. Because then the sizing isn't as important. I mean, I guess it is if you want um, the confidence, but I have the same confidence in all of my trades because I have this, I have the same system with all of my trades. I'm getting in, I have a designated stop, it's the next level, and I have a designated target. So I always have the confidence, but when I, but yes, on Friday I do downsize because if, if I'm having a good green week, say we're up like, we're up like 3,500 on the week, why would I take, on Friday, why would I take like a $1,500 SPX trade late in the day and risk the, ride the risk of giving it back and having a worse, like having a not as good a week. I may as well just take a $500 trade and then be able to risk 50% and still be fine on my week. So Fridays, yes, I always size down on Fridays because the amount of times I've ruined my week by over trading on a Friday and sizing up on a Friday, is it's countless. It's ridiculous. It's, it's literally ridiculous. I remember, I mean, this is obviously, this is years ago, maybe like two, three years ago, but I think I had... I had a, I went, I had a trade that went from 1500 to seven, seven grand by, it was a one day on Monday. And then by Thursday, um, that seven was at like 22. And on Friday, I took like a $7,500 trade and it went back down to 15 to 15 grand. And it was just stupid. It was over trading. It was done. I should have just walked away. So on Fridays, I always size down if I'm having a good week. Yeah, exactly. That's it. How do you determine level to purchase T? What do you, What do you mean to purchase T1? T1 is my is my target. The purchase would be right here at this where it says short. See where it says short. If that candle were to break this wick, that's when I get short. That's when I purchase. That is my purchase. T1, T2, and T3 are levels when I scale out when I'm exiting the trade. Does that make sense? You got it, Fox? Oh, well, if, okay. Well, that, de that depends on uh, that depends on the price. Okay, say here, um, if this is a Monday and we're playing Monday expiration, um, uh, this is at 29.03, I would look at the 2,900 puts. 2,900, mainly because the, if I were to buy, the, I mean, the 2,895s, they would move more they would move more, you can, get better, you can get more percentage gain on them. But that's if we get down to target three, especially on um, end of day. I like to, the, the options I choose are typically like my targets um, over, overtake the strike price. Cause you want to get in the money as fast as possible because of premium, if that makes sense. So the target one is 2,900. So if it gets to my first target, I'm, at, I'm in the money, I'm at the money already. And then if it continues, I'm in the money. 
And if it dilly dallies at target two, these 2895s are going to decay if we don't reach target three. And if this was in the morning and the 2900s, they would probably be about 350 a contract, would be my guess. That's probably pretty close. Yeah. They would probably be about 350 a contract. You take three of those. And then if it got to target two, that's a $5 move, they would be worth about 550. So that'd be, you, if it did that quick, that'd be like $600 gain on the $1,000 purchase. If it got to target two and the desired time. Does that make sense, Fox? I haven't talked this much in forever, my throat hurts. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, any more questions, guys? Ooh, that was almost an hour. Look at me. No more questions? All right, let's leave with. You can do it! Do what you love. You create your reality. All right, here. We'll leave. I got this I got this button from the book, uh, You Are a Badass by Jane, I don't know, Cisnero, I think. So we'll leave with this, guys. You are a badass. You are a badass. All right. Everybody enjoy your weekend. Yeah, thanks, Trey. Yeah, I already have my rental car, my sick Hyundai. <laughs> but you guys enjoy your weekend, and I'll probably be back in Sunday night so we can just go back over these levels and look at the pivots and whatnot. <clears throat> Everybody have a happy Saturday. I'm going to go work out. And then go hang out with my girlfriend Ugh. and probably take a throat lozenge because my throat is killing me. All right. Have a good one, guys.